Welcome fathers who are looking to inspire their kids and become fearless. This is the Become a Fearless Father show and I'm your host, Klaas van Oosterhout. I'm a father of two boys, husband and entrepreneur. This show is created to teach you how to take control and enjoy the most difficult job you've ever faced, fatherhood. I'm going to keep it real and share real life experience. A heads up, there is no magic pill. You will have to put in the hours, sweat and tears to achieve victory. Are you ready to improve your health, wealth, relationships, knowledge and become the hero your family needs you to be? I know you are. So get your pen and paper ready and let's become fearless fathers together. So yeah man, um, first of all, thanks so much for, uh, for taking the time to be online with me. I really appreciate it. Um, as I mentioned before, I really enjoyed um, our... Um, Man, I'm freezing up again. Yeah, you're frozen. I, I can still hear you though. All right, well, that's a good sign. Um, man, I have no idea what's going on today. There we go. All right, cool. So um, I really enjoyed watching your videos for the 30 day challenge. And then I saw your, your picture <laughs> with you sitting at your kid's table and I loved it, and I thought, man, I, I must, must have you on my show and talk to you about entrepreneurship, and maybe if we could get some, um, you know, some questions in regards to fatherhood, that would be amazing. So let's get right on the show, with the, started with the show. Can you share with us your story, who you are, how you got here, uh, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, I'm sure, man. My name is uh, Akbar Sheik, and I'm here in Dallas, and we specialize in uh, EPOP, uh, what I call EPOP, which is Ethical Principles of Persuasion. There's basically five things. Um, when we take a look at all funnels that are suffering, that are not doing well, that are stuck, that are not making the kind of money that they should be, we notice that they're, um, they're lacking in five things. There's five things in their funnel that's gone terribly wrong. That's kind of what we help them fix. And those are uh, EPOP, what I call the five ethical principles of persuasion. So that's what we specialize in. We've had the honor of helping eight funnels hit seven figures, a bunch of them hit six. We're trying to help entrepreneurs make more um, so they can give more back to their families, communities, and favorite charities, hence making this world a better place. Awesome. Yeah, I was checking out your website and your Facebook page and, and taking a look at everything. Um, so that, that's the first thing because your story is really inspiring. You also show a little bit of your, your, how, how you started all this, right? So, um, and, and you mentioned that's the first thing you're saying, like you, we want you to make more, to give more. And I think, you know, that's one of the things that's so important. And I was just wondering, man, from the humble beginnings that you had, because most people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. For you, it's easy now. You know, you, you, you got a really good company, business, you're making the money, so it's easy. And I'm just wondering from your end, because I know you have a, a good philosophy around giving. Can you explain a bit for the people that are like, okay, if you don't have any money, what were the kind of things that you did to, to give? Yeah, man. I mean, like, I think that's a big misconception. You know, people are saying, you know, oh, you know, when I make money, I'll give it or this and that. But giving has really, giving has somehow been associated directly hand in hand with money. Like, you can't say giving without people think money. Do you know what I mean? And that, that's unfortunate um, because giving money is just one of the tools we have to give, one of the resources we have to give. But it's not, it's not the only one. And in, and in a lot of cases, it's not even the most powerful one. Mm -hmm. you know, giving is, is just about helping. You know, some people might be short on their rent or whatever. They might need yes financial resources, or they might just need some advice on, maybe they're just, their spending habits are terrible. Maybe they're fiscally irresponsible. Maybe they just need some good advice. You know, even that's helping. You see, here's the thing. Bottom line is this, God has gifted all of us with gifts. So you have a gift, I have a gift, we all have gifts. Question is, are you using your gift for good? Are you using your gift to help others? Um, that's really what, what it's all about, you know? So it's like whatever resources, I mean, you know, I say, look, if you have money, give. If you don't have money, uh, give your time. If you don't have time, you know, call somebody up, make them smile, you know, or pray for someone, you know? I mean, that's giving too. So there's never, I mean, give, the giving really starts from day one. Mm, that, that's very powerful. I like that you can just send 
somebody a message, a call them, as you mentioned, is even more powerful and, you know, give them a good feeling. So they, it's another way of giving. I like that. And that's basically easy, although we don't, we don't really think about it, do we? It's a beautiful thing when it starts to become second nature, but it takes a little reprogramming. Exactly, exactly. I like that. Great. So when we mentioned, man, I, 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 as I told you, I, I'd like to talk about entrepreneurship. And I, for me, as a fearless father, it's all about being an entrepreneur. So you can make a huge impact in this world and a huge impact on your kid's life, right? However, most of us, we're really afraid to take that step into becoming an entrepreneur and really try to make that impact. And we're even sometimes afraid to being a father, right? And I'm sure you've been through fears and I'm just wondering, you know, what's your approach to deal with, uh, with fear and make sure that it doesn't hold you back? I think it's a beautiful relationship. I think it's, I think, um, fear, fear is a blocker you know, of success. Fear is an obstacle in the way of your success. And the thing is, as entrepreneurs, my dad was telling me this when I was a kid, like we are bulldozers. You know, it's our job to go over any of these obstacles that's helping us from scale. How do I personally, you know, get over that? Um, my mindset is, is, is such where I truly believe that God loves all of us. And I believe that he wants the best for all of us. And I believe every single thing happens for a reason. So, you know, I mean, not too long ago, I broke my leg. We were fooling around in, on segways, just driving on me and my cousins, just having fun. Just fell. I mean, we, well, we crashed into each other and I fell. And it was, it was actually a freak accident. It never happened before, they said. Um, it was a freak accident. I broke my, I forget, fibula, tibula, something. Why? Why was I, why did my leg break? Why, it was excruciating pain. I heard the crack. I mean, it was so painful. I was writhing in pain on the floor. Uh, why, why was I, you know, then I had to recover. Then it was like difficult. It was difficult getting in and out of bed. Difficult, I couldn't even shower. It was real difficult. Why, you know? Should I be mad about that? Should I be frustrated about that? Should I, I could have been. I could have been like, oh man, just my luck. Here we go again. Oh man, why? There's good in it. There's got to be good in it. God made that happen. God loves us very much. So there's good in it. I don't know. Something good is fine. But that's the plan. Probably saved me from something better. Maybe if I didn't break my leg, I would have gone driving somewhere. I would have gotten into a car accident that would have that would have broken all my bones. You know, you got to look at it like that. So everything happens for our betterment, man. So like even, I mean, just the other day, you know, these things happen. I think, I think, um, you know, I mean, we lost, there was a $25,000 deal that, that didn't work out because the person decided to go into software, into some sort of software, into some other sort of software. Meaningless. Did I didn't even flinch. It didn't mean anything. Do you know what I mean? Um, when you understand and you're in the mind from that, there's a master plan and everything happens for a reason and it's, it's all for your betterment, then that, that really helps to reduce fear dramatically. Exactly. And then you use that fear to even propel you to, to make an, a bigger impact or to make an even better uh, advantage with your, uh, with your work and attack to hand. You know, truth be told, man, I mean, I used to be homeless. I mean, truth be told, I, I was never worried about money, never got scared about money. We're, we're humans. We can speak. We can walk. We can talk. We can breathe. That means we can make money. Um, I've never worried about, oh my God, my, my, my bill is due next month. Oh my God, my mortgage is due. Oh my God, the groceries. Oh my God. I just never thought about that. Never. Even when I was completely broke. Because of that, I mean, come on, we're entrepreneurs. We are, again, we are born with the tools needed uh, to generate revenue, to make impact. You know, I mean, I don't even understand how you can kind of question these things. Like, oh my God, this bill is due. How am I going to get... Dude, we live in the golden era right now. Like, if you're an online entrepreneur, you're, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful blessing. It's such a great thing. It's not hard to make revenue online these days. Mm -hmm. I think, oh, right, if I, if I, you know, I mean, I, I should do this sometime where someone challenges me. Like, oh, man, I'm just going to go get a new client today. And I can do it, I promise you. You know, 
anybody can. You know, it's like it's like back in the day, even when I didn't have money, it's like, oh, don't have money, okay, I'll go downtown and, and tell some jokes, so, you know, and, and people will give you, you know what I mean? It's like, if you're an entrepreneur, and you know you're an entrepreneur, and you have these tools, then you, then you will generate revenue no matter what. The only, you know, the only person stopping you would be your own self. Exactly. You know, like today, right? This morning, I, I kind of didn't want to, I, I just wanted to hang out. So I didn't really, I didn't really work. I just decided to hang out. It's, it's all decisions that you make. You know, you can decide to make money. You can decide to worry about it. Exactly. All about decisions. I like that. That's powerful. Hey, sorry for the interruption. I know you're really enjoying the show. Just want to make sure if you're liking this information, please subscribe and um, press the like button. And also go visit becomeafearlessfather.com. You get the opportunity to share your biggest challenge at the moment as a father. And it gives me the opportunity to try and help you overcome this. Thanks and enjoy the rest of the show. We actually got a question uh, from, from Paolo. He wants to know a little bit more about, because you just mentioned, you know, I was broke and humble beginnings. Um, you know, he wants to a little bit, know a little bit more about how you build everything up um, and especially how, how did you build up your, your credibility? That's easy, man. It's easy. I mean, that's the easiest thing, right? I mean, like, let's just say tomorrow I decide to become a Facebook marketer. Tomorrow I decide that I'm going to do a Facebook agency. Nobody knows me in this world. I have no credibility in, in Facebook ad agency. Mm -hmm. Simple. Just get some people some results. And results happen quickly. I sign up a client. I offer to work for them for free. Last semester, they did 20 signups. This semester, I helped them do 40. Hey, I just doubled your revenue in a matter of a few weeks. Simple. You, if you're good at what you do, then you're going to get people results. If you're good at what you do, then you're going to get people results. And if you're not good at what you do, then you need to get good at what you do before anything else. The first thing is you can become awesome at what you do. The rest is easy, man. Just getting people results. Exactly, exactly. All right, great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you know, the, the biggest change for me that, that happened this year um, was starting my morning routine. I've never done that before, but I heard a lot of successful people mentioning that, you know, you got to have a, a wonderful morning routine. So I'm just wondering, how does your, are, are you just as strict as every, you know, as, as everybody I've seen so far in regards to that morning routine, or how, how is that set up for you? And what are the kind of things that you must do that, that help you have a, a full day or a fantastic day? Um, you know, it's funny, man. My mornings are, are chaotic, man. I got two kids. I got a one-year-old and a two-year-old. Oh, wow. You know, you look a lot. Sorry, man. Give me one second. I think this is my contract. Uh, he, he might need me. One second. Let me, let me talk to him more quickly. Sure, Hello? no problem. Hello? Thanks for your question, uh, Paolo. I hope you, uh, um, you got the answer that you were looking for. If not, you can also put it in the chat so I can easily see it, okay? That's no problem. And, uh, okay, sorry about that. No, uh, that, that, I, sorry. That. Um, yeah, my morning's pretty nuts, man. I got a one-year-old and a two-year-old. And a lot of these people, you know, who have all these crazy morning routines, they don't have kids. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of them don't. Some of them might do. Well, you, look, first thing, I, first thing I do when I get up is I pray. That's, that's like, consistent. You know, that's the consistent thing. Uh, I'm all, I, listen, I'm for waking up early. I'm not much of a morning person, uh, to be honest with you. So I get up, I pray. And the kids take over my morning, to be honest with you, man. Just getting them up, changing them, feeding them, getting ready for school. Then, then I take them to school and I get to the office at around about 10 o'clock. A little bit before 10. I, I kind of start my, my work day. I kind of start at 10. Of course, you know, when I wake up, I have an addiction problem. First thing, you know, I pray. And then, of course, I check my phone, see what's happening. Um, and then, honestly, no, no, no real routine, man. Because it, my routine is just with the kids. And then I get to work a little bit before 10. And I would just grind it out. Exactly. And this is the one thing that I really enjoy is being able as an entrepreneur and a father to wake up my kids and yeah. get them ready, get them to school and all those kind of things and pick them up, etc., and have that, that freedom. However, you know, the one thing I'm also struggling with is um, you know, I also want to spend a lot of time on my business, especially now this, this, you know, this is my new business. I've just started working on that and I want to make a huge impact as fast as possible. So I'm struggling a little bit with 
that time management kind of thing. So I'm just wondering, you know, do you have a system to organize your time or how do you do that? I'll tell you one thing. First of all, I guess I want to say this to some of the entrepreneurs out there. You know, I'm all about, I'm, listen, I support having a routine. I think it's a great thing, but I also want to let some of the entrepreneurs know that, hey, it's not entirely necessary. You know, I, I don't have one. I do pretty well. You know what I mean? So I, I just want to like, hopefully that helps somebody who's like, dude, I tried these morning stuff and it's not working. And that they use that as an excuse. That's not an excuse. If you don't have a morning routine, that doesn't mean you can't be successful. Do you know what I mean? Um, so you don't necessarily need one. As far as time management goes, look, you've got to accomplish at least three things a day that's going to move your business forward. At least three things a day that's going to move your business forward. I like to schedule things. Truth is, man, I don't really follow my schedule either. <laughs> Meaning like my own, like if I, like like with you, I was on time, right? We were supposed to start and I came on time. Right. But like if I schedule myself, okay, dude, go over these emails. Like that might work, that might not work. So I like to write a list at least. Like I have a, a reminder list, real simple. I just have a reminder, like I need to do these things today. So like before, I was doing something great. Before I was on this and after this interview, I'm going to do something great. Going over emails, I'm doing a new email sequence for people who join my Facebook group. Um, they're going to get into a sequence where I'm going to give them value. It's going to get them to my webinar where you know, we sell them on our coaching program, which our students are crushing it. We've helped eight funnels at seven figures. So that's a big thing. So I mean, like today, for example, what am I doing? Okay, so I'm building a new, we're building a new funnel, a new coaching funnel. I made the, like the best video ever. So that was one thing, went over that. Talk to my executive assistant about oh doing a secret project within my seven figure family which is my inner circle then i'm working on these i'm building a new email sequence it's not even lunchtime so we're doing this in fact honestly if i finish the email sequence and i took the rest of the day off i had a good day to be honest with you but it's about like it's about avoiding the traps man the shiny objects the get the i mean like and this is reminding myself dude like get the hell off of facebook you know, I mean, you should look at it every day for a little bit for market research. But dude, now if you if you have an iPhone, I have an iPhone, and you update to the latest iOS, like, and I'm sure there's apps if you don't have an iPhone, but it tells you how much screen time screen time you do every day. You'll be disgusted if you find out how much time you're wasting. There's plenty of time, dude. No, and the other thing is like, look, I've got some sales calls today, but guess what? I'm not taking them. My sales team is taking them. You know, so now I don't have to do that. I I'm doing what I do best, and then I outsource the rest. You know what I mean? My story is a little different now, though, bro. I'm taking, you know, I take it a little bit easy because, you know, we've done, you know, we do well. And, you know, I've got a couple of kids and stuff like that. But uh, listen, I worked very, very hard, you know, last year, night and day. I mean, did, to the point where it damaged my relationship with my, with my with my wife. I mean, I work so hard. You know, so I'm taking it a little bit more easy now. But I still work every day from like ten to five every single day. I guess that's taking it easy. I guess, I guess, I guess. I guess my 40 hours now is taking it easy. Yeah, 40, 50 hours a week. That's me taking it easy, I guess. But um, yeah, man, you just got, the key is to write it out. The key is to write that today I want to accomplish this and don't go home until I do this, these three things. That That's the key for me anyway. Exactly. And as you mentioned, because you just said something very important, and that's something I, I've recently learned through this course uh, the 30 day challenge with uh, with Russell Brunson, right? He was saying, look, don't focus on how to do something, just focus on who can do it. You just mentioned a little bit like, I let my team do that. Um, is that something that, how, how have you set that up? How, how have you come about to, to really control that? And I think it's also maybe a little bit ego thing for me. It's like, no, 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 I gotta figure this out first myself. Uh, you smile and say, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> can you explain a little bit? That all up. So that, that's always funny. I like like I'm technologically illiterate. You know, I have, I have no idea about tech. I'm not interested in tech. I don't try to figure out anything. I have a tech people who handle that, right? Now you talk about that ego thing. I had something similar with my sales calls. I'm like, dude, no, I'm really good at sales calls. My closing ratio is really high. Nobody knows my program better than me. So for a while, I was taking all my own sales calls. That was such a big mistake. Because the truth is, it's all it's just math at the end of the day. You know, it's just about closing ratio. You know, there's no reason in the world you can't get a good sales team, good sales guy to close at 20, 25%. Of course, I'm talking about high ticket items, mm -hmm. um, like, like, like our coaching programs. There's no reason in the world you can't do that. You know, you should, and the commission only. You know, it took me a little while to find, I had to try a few teams. You know, some sales guys will say anything to close a sale. I was not interested in that. I need ethical salespeople who 
fully sold to someone who, who would benefit from it and who would take advantage of it. You know, we're a little different though, bro. We're not like, you know, it's not all about the money for us. We're not like the land bam, thank you, man. We're not going to sell to anybody. You know what I mean? Like, like some people do, but you got to just find the team and, and it's still a lot of trial and error, dude. Like I've had to hire a lot of people before finding great people, mm -hmm. a lot of trial and error, a lot of wasted money. I've learned a few things on how to skip all that, which I teach my students, you know? Um, but yeah, man, having a team is essential. Otherwise you can't, you should really only be wearing one hat. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, now, um, I'm I'm also wondering because from the conversation so far, I noticed that you're different from the people that I've spoken to so far because everybody's very strict and then you just focus on what you have to focus on and everything else can come as it goes. Um, I'm wondering, are you a person that reads a lot or is that something that's not so important for you? How 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 does that come into your growing as a successful entrepreneur? Most people read a lot more than me. But I'll tell you something. I think I read better than most people. And what I mean by that is people will come up to me and be, man, your book was awesome. I read your whole book yesterday. And I'm like, oh, dude, come on. That means I failed you. That means you didn't listen to the instructions in the book. Because in my definition, the right way to read a book, the proper way to read a book is to read a little bit. You know, so what I do is I read a couple of pages. Mm -hmm. And I'll put my bookmark. And I will write notes on what I just learned. And I'll turn that into a to-do list. So, huh, that's interesting. Okay, so I should take this lesson and I should apply it and implement it in this aspect of my business. So I'll do that. And then I'll go, and then after I implement, then I'll go back and read some more. So I read a little bit. I read a little and I implement a lot. Wow, that just opened my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've been struggling with that because you keep hearing, you got to read, you got to read. And I'm reading and I'm struggling to get through this book and I'm finally through this book and I'm like, yeah, so what? Now I can say I read a book in a month or yeah. I don't know, however long it took me and, and it still got nowhere. I like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that exactly. That, that way I don't have to. I think, I think you've touched a very interesting topic here. And that is like, dude, you don't want to go out there and listen to all the noise. Like all the noise. So you have to have a morning routine and you've got to read. And you, dude, you, no, you don't have to do any of that. You don't have to read all the time. You don't have to have some crazy morning routine. Um, <laughs> listen. You can carve your own way. You really should. Here's the, here's the best advice I can give somebody. Find a mentor that you align with, you know, that, that, which is actually why I became a coach is because I got so much success from having a coach. So find a coach, find a mentor, number one, that you resonate with. And when you, when you listen to them talk, you're like, huh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, everyone else says that, but this guy's actually making sense. So find someone like that. Hire them, implement what they tell you to do, and don't give up, and, and you're gonna win. It, 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 the formula is really just that simple. Nice. That, that's, yeah, that, agree, that indeed is great advice. In regards to reading, and you mentioned you read a little bit and then you implement, what was like maybe the one book or the top three books that you're like, wow, I could read two pages and then I, I had something already that I, I needed to start implementing. I mean, the best books, of course, are the holy books, the books of God. Uh, that's number one, because even that teaches you so much about business. Nobody talks about that enough, I don't think. But I mean, it'll teach you everything, a lot about business, about ethics, about even morning routines and uh, knowledge, you're talking about reading. <clears throat> so that's the first book. As far as business book goes, it depends what, what you want to specialize in copywriting that you know there's great books on copywriting by sugarman there's great books on strategy there's great books on building teams you should read on what you're trying to improve mm. you know it should be pretty focused read exactly so not read to read as the traps is set and happens with me at least but read exactly like okay what's my challenge for example what's my obstacle what's my goal and that's what you find stuff to to read on whatever I'm Excellent. Yeah. Real quick. You, 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 you came out with a book, is that correct? I did. We have a book, uh, Practice International Number One Bestseller. Uh, what is it called? It's called Seven Figure Funnels to Slap You in the Face with a Cold Blood Fish Blueprint on How to Build on How to, what is it? Hold on. 
Seven Figure Funnels is slapping in the face with a cold redfish blueprint on how to build a seven figure online business and just seven ethical steps, smiley face. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. And yeah. can, can people find that on your website or on Amazon or? Yeah, I tell you what, man, it's $47 right now on Amazon, but um, I'm happy to give it to your audience for free if they just go to sevenfigurebook.com. Cool. Oh, I appreciate that. I will definitely share that link on, uh, um, you know, on the replay that we're going to launch on, on YouTube and on Facebook. So I really appreciate that. Um, you mentioned about 30 minutes. Do you have time for like one or two questions more? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. No problem. All right. I really appreciate that. So I'm going to take a little bit of advantage of it and be a little selfish. Uh, as you know, you know, I, I shot the video to invite you and I'm inviting a lot of other people and I see behind you a big smiley face of Russell Brunson. I also saw uh, Gary V behind you. Um, I would love to have those people on my show, but at the same time, I mean, I'm, I'm a little nervous now talking to you, right? Because for me, you, you're there where I ultimately want to be. I'm just wondering how, do you go about with these kind of nerves that might hold you back from meeting these kind of great people and, you know, being ethical and authentic when you're around those kind of guys? Are you talking about like big influencers like Russell and these guys? Yeah, exactly. Like people that you really look up to. I mean, I'm still, I mean, I'll be, I mean, I'm still nervous when I talk to these guys, to be totally honest with you. I mean, like I just left Russell a message. I was nervous about the mess. You know, I was nervous. I, well, with practice, it gets less and less nervous, but I'm still looking at the time. I want to respect his time, you know, because I really look up to him, so I want to leave a short message. Um, you know, it's nerve-wracking in the beginning, but then, you know, it just, it just gets easier, bro. It's like, it's like speaking on stage. The first time I spoke on stage, my left arm went numb. Wow. I thought I was going to die. Now I still, I still get a little nervous, but it's way better. And then... Once people start, you know, clapping or laughing or you see that they're like really enjoying it, then it just starts feeling good and you really get in the zone. Then it becomes like a drug. You actually just like really enjoy it. So, so it's kind of the same concept, man. You just got to like, you got to do it. And, and, you know, I promise it gets better. It's, it, it was a little tough in the beginning, but it doesn't matter because it gets better. It's like a toothache, man. Like I just had a toothache and I knew, so man, this is going to suck. They, as a matter of fact, they were going to extract my tooth. So this is going to be, this is going to be terrible. You know, and it was, it was terrible. I almost fell off my chair in pain. But you know what? Afterwards, I'm pain-free. Exactly. So you're saying you got to bite through it. Yeah, man. You just, it's not, it's not that bad, to be honest. Look, man, we're all in first, where, where are you? You're in Spain? Yeah. Yeah, we're all in first world countries, man. I mean, there's nothing hard. There's nothing hard here. You know what I mean? I mean, if our biggest problem is like getting nervous, meeting an influencer, then life is pretty good. You know what I mean? I mean, turn on the news for five minutes, the world news, you'll see it's pretty, th I saw, I saw this disgusting, I don't know if the word disgusting is, is appropriate, but I saw this, well, no, disturbing picture mm -hmm. of, this, of this child, skin and bones, some third world country, skin and bones dying, literally dying of starvation. You go to a restaurant here and there's nothing, but an endless sea of wasted food that would save so many lives. So we got no problems here, man. We got no problems here. Uh, that's absolutely true. Now, you also mentioned uh, one of the big things for you is, um, um, and, uh, and now the, <laughs> the English becomes a, um, anthropology. W what are some of the things that you, that you do to, to help others? I think it'd be philanthropy. Philanthropy, uh, philanthropy sorry. Yep. <laughs> See, the English yeah. <laughs> kept me in the dark. Um, yeah, what, what are some of the things that you do to make a huge impact on, on less fortunate? You know, man. Everybody, I suggest everybody find a why that makes you cry, you know, because, well, first of all, we empower entrepreneurs. We, we help entrepreneurs scale, right? So we've helped a lot of people make a lot more revenue, right? When they become a student of mine. And then because of that, they start giving more. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's had a huge ripple effect. We, I've had students, my students, students donate more because I teach them some skill sets. So they donate more. Then or they profit, they don't know, then they teach that to their students and those students profit more and they give more. So the ripple effect is profound. Personally, we're passionate about three things. One is giving clean water to Africa. Two is sponsoring orphans all over the world. And number three is giving the gift of vision to, to blind children um, by paying for their eye surgery. So that's personally what, what we're passionate about from a philanthropic point of view. Nice. 
That, that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I joined the, what Russell promoted, the OUR. I found that very powerful. Yeah. In regards to, yeah. uh, you know, saving children that are uh, being enslaved. And, yeah. Um, yes. That, that's a very good one. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to do extra, but it's difficult from over here. But um, like you mentioned before, man, you just got to try to find things that we can do to give back, even spend our time. I want to involve my kids, but uh, mine is two and five, and I'm not sure how to do this yet. So, you know, I mean, like, that's the thing, right? They, but they see us doing this stuff from like a young age, and they grow up with it, and it just kind of becomes a part of them, you know? Mm. And that's, that's why I was wondering, because your, your kids are really young, right? You know, one-year-old and two-year-old, you mentioned. But are you already thinking, like, um, what you're going to teach them, if, if you're going to just send them to school like all the regular kids, or if you're going to homeschool them, if you're going to teach them about funnels and as soon as possible at a young age start building their own company? How, how, how's your vision about that? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I got a cough. Excuse me. Excuse me. I don't, if I look, I don't think I want to send them. I'm not sure if I want to send them to public school, probably private school. Mm. <coughs> Home school, I'm not sure about. I don't think, oh man, <coughs> I got this cough, sorry. Uh, Home school, I'm not sure about. I don't think my wife or I kind of have the patience to deal with them all day. <coughs> uh, I think homeschooling is great. But I don't know, probably probably private school. And then, of course, you know, they do whatever they want to do. I mean, like, my, you know, we always were kind of, grew, our, our, our dad always grew, um, raised us saying that you're going to be in business, you're going to be in business, you're going to, I don't think I'm going to do that to my kids. I, I am a big fan of entrepreneurship. Mm. I am a big fan. I think that if you have what it takes, it, it's a beautiful thing to be. I think that entrepreneurs make this world a better place. I think they're the movers and shakers. I think they're the ones impacting change. I think it's a beautiful thing to be, and I hope that they are. You know, but I, you know, listen, we have respect for <coughs> we have respect for the nine to five world. You know, if they're passionate about becoming whatever a doctor, which <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage them to be, because doctors are now just licensed drug dealers. Uh, it's all about the money in that field now, at least over here. Anyway. But, you know, I don't know if they want to become, I don't know, if they're passionate about landscaping. I mean, I would encourage them to own the company, but if they just, if they don't want, uh, you know, if they don't want all that um, headache, and they just like, I just want the simple life, and I just enjoy mowing grass, and I want to do a great job at it, and I want to just, you know, listen, whatever makes them happy, I will always encourage them you know, in, that, in a non-pushy way to try to be the best that they can be because the thing is like, the guy who's making $10 an hour and the guy who's making $1,000 an hour have the same amount of hours in a day. Do you know what I mean? So I always want to encourage them to be the best that they can be so that they can make the world a better place. You know, if you went missing tomorrow, is the world going to be impacted? Is it going to be any different? You know, most of my life, no. It wouldn't have made any difference in the world. Now I can say, you know what, you know, you know, people will will will, have, will suffer. So that's the point I think that that people should get to is where you you are having a positive impact. Nice. That's a very powerful message to uh, to end this this live interview. I really appreciate that. And um, just my last question, I always ask this. You know, how how can fathers get in touch with you if they have any other questions, um, if they want to know, or even if they want to follow you. Just go to my website, uh, which is uh, my name.com, A K B A R S H E I K H.com. Um, and th right there, uh, there's perfect. Follow me on Facebook, check out my website, and we'd love to help, man. We love entrepreneurs. If you have an ethical product or service, you need to make the world a better place. We're, we're all about helping you out, and, uh, and it'd be our honor. That's awesome. I'll make sure that the, the links will be shared for everybody. So again, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're really busy, so it was awesome. And as I mentioned, I was a bit nervous, but I felt really comfortable having this conversation with you. Looking forward to, uh, to being able to, to get a hold of your book and read uh, step-by-step and implementing a lot. So again, man, thanks. I learned tons. 
which is awesome. And that's why I do a lot of people do as well. So I uh, wish you best of luck with all your projects. And uh, yeah, let, let's, let's keep in touch, man. My pleasure, man. Thank you so much. Hope, hope uh, your, benef- your audience uh, had some benefit. Oh, they definitely will. I'm sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Talk soon. Peace. Peace. Are you still meeting up with your friends now that you're a father? Kids making you stress out. You got no time for yourself to work out, read, or relax. Can you still remember the time you were hanging out with your friends feeling energetic, happy, and confident? Spending time together and talking about your life and your crazy dreams. You're feeling alone now, don't you? No one to share your challenges with, and you're just running around from one storm into the next. Well, it's time to change this now. Join me and the Brotherhood of Fearless Fathers to speak on a weekly basis with like-minded dads to crush your challenges, face your fears with determination, be held accountable and regain control of your life. If you want to become the hero your family needs you to be, then go to becomeafearlessfather.com brotherhood. Looking forward to seeing you on one of our next calls.